Good evening, exiles, and welcome to my kitchen. So this month on our discussion and study on historical figures we can learn from, I'm going to do two because they have a similar story, and the differences between them is where we can get a good lesson. So it's Simeon and Anna from the uh, Bible. <coughs> so start off, give a little background story of how the temple works. So you show up at the temple. It's not like modern-day church. There's multiple layers, like multiple sections of it, and there's people in and out going everywhere. There's guys selling stuff to be uh, sacrificed because, let's face it, if you live like a five-day walk, you don't want to drag your sheep for five days. Now it's a seven-day trip because you're dragging a sheep or a donkey with you. So you sell you the sheep, go to the temple, buy a new sheep, and sacrifice it. As far as God's concerned, that's the same thing. Um, and a lot of times those good, really good sheep would make their way to the temple anyway, eventually. But anyway, the, uh, uh, so it's, it's, think of the, uh, kind of hectic and crowdedness when you go to like a county fair and there's people everywhere doing things. And that'd be more like, not the atmosphere, but more like the crowds and what's going on at the temple than we think of its church. So, uh, Mary and Joseph take Jesus when he's eight days old to the temple because, like, they're required to under uh, Mosaic law. And when they get there, Simeon's there. Now, Simeon's been hanging out at the temple a lot. We're not sure why he's there all the time, but he's an elderly man. And at some point in time, God has talked to him and told him, hey, you, uh, you'll you see the Messiah before you die. So Simeon, even though there's all these crowds and hundreds of people, maybe even thousands of people everywhere running around, he sees Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. He walks up to him, asks if he can hold their baby. They say, yeah, you can hold my baby, which I wouldn't have handed off a baby to some weirdo in a big giant crowd like that. But I'm not marrying Joseph. I'm not chosen to, to, to be the earthly parents of God. So uh, they're special people. But anyway, they hand Simeon, the, uh, Jesus, over to Simeon. Simeon looks at G the baby in his arms, Jesus, and says, Oh, now I've gotten to see the Messiah. Now I can go off and be happy and die happy like God said I could. Hands Jesus back and leaves now saying that Jesus is the Messiah is a prophecy and he's doing the right thing he's doing exactly what God told him to do but he's not going to do anything extra he's just doing the bare minimum exactly following the rules and he's really happy and I mean he got to see the Messiah face to face I didn't get to see Jesus face to face at least not yet then some point in time, uh, this widow who's been living in the temples for uh, most of her life, she's widowed pretty young, uh, she comes up and sees Jesus. Her name's Anna. She asks if she can hold the baby, looks at Jesus, says, hey, this guy, this baby is the Messiah. And then instead of saying, now I can go, now I'm happy that I saw the Messiah and I can die happy she hands the baby back to Mary and then goes around the temple and all of Jerusalem saying the Messiah is here we need to repent the kingdom of God is at hand now most people that saw her running around saying this probably uh, are like yeah Anna spent too much time at the temple she's finally lost it and you can't blame them because if you saw a guy running around on the street tomorrow yelling and screaming and telling everybody that uh, Jesus is coming, you better repent now, uh, Jesus, the second return is coming tomorrow, it's, it's the end times, you'd be pretty, you'd be like, that guy's nuts. And the reason they would have thought it was the end times is because they didn't understand the two comings of Jesus. So they think just the Messiah coming and taking over would have been the end times. Now, we're not going to go into the difference between 
what end time prophecy and all that is, especially at the time. But she's running around saying it's, you know, all this stuff that seemed, if me and you heard her, we'd say it was crazy too. And the important lesson I want to get here is not that don't always, well, two important lessons. One, don't always think those people are crazy, but uh, double check with the Bible and read, don't just take the, because they could be crazy. Don't just take their word for it. Same thing with your preacher and anybody, and me, me too. Check, read the Bible, check to see what, if what we're saying checks out. And then the other thing is Simeon did the bare minimum, what God told him he had to do. And Simeon was most likely saved because he held the baby Jesus. He prophesied about Jesus. So, but Anna, when she saw Jesus and had Jesus come into her life, she just didn't sit there quietly about it. She went and told everybody and preached to them and tried to get the whole, all of Jerusalem to repent and become saved as well. So we can't just, when we become Christians and we have Jesus in our lives, we can't just do what Simeon did. We should really do what Anna did and preach to other people and uh, spread the word or Tons of Bible verses about doing that. And before we uh, go and spread the word and preach, we should uh, learn more and also be an example through our lives. Both of these people seem like they're great people, dedicated their or a good chunk of their life, in Anna's case, almost their entire life, to helping out at the temple. So that's pretty much all I got for the lesson. We should try to be more like, even though Simeon did nothing wrong, we should be more like Anna and try to give 100% to God and go beyond what the bare minimum rule is. Because read what Jesus said to the Pharisees about them following the bare minimum rules. It's not good, by the way. So thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Comparing and contrast. Oh, real quick before I go. Uh, for people that say the Bible's anti-woman... Uh, a lot of the good, best prophets around Jesus were all women. Uh, after his crucifixion and his uh, resurrection, all the pro everybody that prophesied his resurrection, running around telling and spreading the word of his resurrection to other people were all women. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Check out the After Class podcast. Uh, they did a whole section, on a whole podcast series um, women in the Bible and how the Bible is not actually anti-woman. Uh, so I hope you got something out of this. I hope you're getting something out of this series. Uh, and out of the other videos that I do. And remember, we his servants will start rebuilding.